A couple of episodes ago, I made a bold prediction about what might happen with some shipping containers off the West Coast, and it turns out that I might have been right. In segment three today, we're going to talk about something called ESG, which is very, very important, but I'm betting that a lot of you have no idea what I'm talking about, so please stick around and do some learning with me on that. And in segment two, we're going to talk about a really, really sad story. A whole bunch of alcohol got destroyed. That's no good. There's a whole lot to cover today, so get in your seat, buckle up, keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times, because this is the Soul of Wisdom, and here we go. <laughs> Greetings and welcome as always. This is the Soul of Wisdom. I am your host with the most, Dan. With me, as always, the lovable linguistic legend, <laughs> producer wife Beth. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, I think we should start off with the sad news that we have to report today. Okay. And that's that it's Monday. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Hate to break it to you. But again, if you're like us and you work seven days, it really doesn't matter. A day is a day. But at the end of the week is Halloween, if you, you know, are looking forward to such things. It is Halloween, and we're going to get nice food, and we're going to watch nice movies, and we're going to have a nice time. And we're going to get no sleep. And we're going to binge on some candy. <laughs> binge on some candy. It'd be perfect. You should do the same, dear listener. Have some fun. Next Sunday evening, after you've listened to our Sunday special, of course, enjoy the day. Yeah. Alrighty. So, uh, you know, you can visit us, and we'd love it if you visited us. You can find us online at soulwisdom.com, S-O-U-L-E, wisdom.com. You can email us questions at soulwisdom.com. We love that kind of interaction, so do it. You can tweet us at soulwisdom. If you are on the podcast side and the service you're getting us through allows you to leave a five-star review, please consider doing so because it does help the show get out there in front of more people. If you are a visually gifted listener watching on YouTube and Rumble, things like liking and subscribing or hitting that little punchy thing on Smashing Rumble. Smashing that bell. Smash the bell, break your keyboard, all that. These things really do help. I know you hear it from every single person you've ever seen on YouTube, but there's a reason why you hear it. It really does make a difference. Yep. Okie dokie. So let's get right into it. We've got a pretty packed show today. If there was ever a time where you should stick around for segment three, this is it. Uh, we're going to talk about... Uh, Kind of an expansion of what we talked about on yesterday's Sunday discussion. Uh, you know, we talked about uh, Walmart and their critical race theory training. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got you a why. We did a little bit of digging and research, and I'm going to give you the reason why I believe they're doing it. Okay. I still don't think they should, but I'm going to let you know why I think it's happening. Okie dokie. So before we get into today's first point, I want to break a little bit from what I normally do, and I want to rant for a second. Okay. Is that all right? It's fine with me. Producer wife, this is not directed at you. I've, well, I've heard you rants before. So. You, you have. It's not new on me. Okay. So I am noticing a disturbing trend amongst family and friends, amongst people I don't even know, people I run into out in the world, people I see online, all of it. And the disturbing trend is that everybody, no, well, not everybody, the people that I'm seeing, okay, too many though, are burying their heads in the sand on the way the world is right now. We're ignoring news, we're ignoring stories, we are not uh, doing our due diligence and researching what's going on around us. We simply have this let's just get through the day kind of mentality. Here's the problem with that. Self-preservation is what it is. Well, I'm sure it is. But the problem with it is if you are just in survival mode, if you are not getting to the bottom of what's going on, if you aren't figuring out what you can do about it, uh, that is how countries are lost. And I don't care if you are five or 85, if you are on this planet, if you are in this country and you are alive, you have a duty, in my humble opinion, to start paying attention to what is going on around you. And that goes beyond just a simple social media feed. You need to get out there and look at different news sites from all angles, not just one. Don't pick a tribe. Go read all tribes. Yep. Figure out what's going on. Take some ownership of your life and your country and do something to fix it. 
because you're going to find uh, just in the three stories that we're going to talk about today and the other things that we cover on this podcast that there's a lot that is broken and it needs to be fixed and it's not going to be fixed unless each of us takes some kind of responsibility for what's going on and does something about it but unfortunately I'm seeing so many people who just want to ignore things and it, and it can be anything it can be um, you know obviously what we talk about here that is mostly more business related stuff so it can be things with that it can be things with what's going on in schools it can have to do with crime on the streets and in your neighborhoods inflation whatever the fact that sometimes our president can't put together a coherent sentence any of it but these are all things that affect us every day yeah and too many people are just turning away from it trying to turn a blind eye going nothing to see here if I just ignore it okay it's like the signs of cancer that you ignore in your body and the next thing you know you're ravaged with it and there's nothing to do about it yeah okay well we are all part of the larger body that is the united states and if we don't start paying some better attention to it then kiss your country goodbye we joke a lot but stop ignoring the dumpster fire that's happening around you yeah we have you know over my left shoulder is a dumpster fire little stuffed animal thing and we have him on set for a reason it's a reminder that stuff isn't right okay and we want to have fun and we want to talk about fun things and you know goof around and we try to do that but there's also a serious nature to what's going on and we cover those things because we are very interested in small business because that's what we are we're interested in big business because we've worked with it we're interested in people and we point out what's going on so that business and people can be in the know and do something about it but if you turn a blind eye and you try to ignore things and you pretend it doesn't exist and you don't want to do anything about it and it'll just go away eventually no it won't the cancer will eat you your country is gone this is not what I'm interested in and that's happened in other countries yeah so yeah. it's not unprecedented go ask people from Venezuela who in, in Venezuela was a hopping happening country until the day it wasn't and that went quick yeah go ask them all the warning signs that they ignored they'll tell you go ask members of the former Soviet Union people who lived under that communist regime the oppression that they had to go through and then ask them what kind of signs they're seeing here now of that very thing same thing they'll tell you because they see it coming again yeah can't ignore this stuff so stop ignoring it if you aren't ignored if you are doing something about it uh, you have my gratitude and my respect if you put your head in the sand you do not have my gratitude or my respect but I hope you can pull your head out of the sand and maybe the show will help you do it and rant <laughs> onward I just had to get that off my chest chest clear good yay okay so producer wife we were talking the other day about the shipping crisis that we're having yes actually we've talked several days about it yeah but the last time we talked about it I believe I came up with the idea that maybe at this point all of those ships that are waiting to even get into the port should just dump the things over and let them float to shore yes you were joking but yeah but I was right but you were right <laughs> So let's go to Mr. Browser on the visually gifted side. The rest of you listen to the sound of my voice from Fox Business. The best news in business, at least sometimes. U.S. Coast Guard monitoring adrift shipping containers off Pacific Coast amid supply chain crisis. Uh, we found this article and I chuckled out loud and I yelled, I called it. Okay, hold on here a minute. You guys didn't hear that, but a video just queued up on their stupid site. I like Fox. I don't like the fact that they just launch videos whenever the hell they feel like it. Yeah. If you're there reading an article, it's annoying. Drives me nuts. Anyways, muted in my headphones now. The Coast Guard says it is monitoring several floating shipping containers off the Pacific Coast amid worsening supply woes. Several containers were lost off an inbound ship about 43 miles west of the Strait of Juan de Fuca. 
Okay. I didn't even know that was a thing or a place. According to the U.S. Coast Guard Pacific Northwest, the U.S. Coast Guard later communicated that eight containers have been located and are actively being tracked by U.S. Coast Guard helicopters. The announcement comes amid unprecedented gridlock of shipping containers off the port of Los Angeles and Long Beach. So I don't know if they shoved them over. I don't know if they're full or they're empty. I've got no idea what's going on with that. But I find it really funny that I said, hey, they should just float them to shore. And now we're paying for Coast Guard helicopters to track eight of them. There's no expense there, I'm sure. Didn't you say that this ship is also on fire when we looked at it? Yeah, this was from a couple days ago, but this one wasn't off the coast of Los Angeles, though. It's uh, off the coast of Vancouver Island. But there were choppy waters. That's what they're blaming for. 40 shipping containers fell overboard off of the ship, and then it caught on fire. Nice. So, a dumpster fire at sea. So it's just hanging out there, and it's, uh, it's in, in flames. That's super cool. So yeah, it says, uh, it said somewhere, where was it? How far away it was from, now I can't find it. But anyway, Vancouver, up there past Seattle. <laughs> so Canada's not getting their Toyotas or their iPhones anytime soon. Yeah, or, yeah, or they're just <laughs> floating around. That's super cool. All right, great. Uh, back to Mr. Browser because there was more that I had to show you because it really is a dumpster fire. Okay. Lest you think the problems are only at sea, we also have problems on land. This from CBS News, neighborhood streets clogged by trucks hauling shipping containers. A Los Angeles neighborhood just outside the nation's busiest port has become a perpetual traffic jam with trucks that are hauling cargo containers backed up day and night as workers try to break through an unprecedented backlog of ships waiting to unload. About 40% of all shipping containers entering the U.S. come through Los Angeles or Long Beach. We knew that. The logjam of ships has interrupted the global supply chain and last weekend prompted the Biden admin to allow the port complex to operate 24 hours a day. I still don't know how they're pulling that off because I don't think they have enough workers, but whatever. Since then, the residents of the Wilmington neighborhood just north of the ports have complained that trucks are backed up in the streets at all hours. Meanwhile, cargo companies running out of space to store containers offload from ships are stacking them outside overloaded warehouses and in parking lots. This week, a container slid off a truck making a turn on a narrow street and pancaked a car. I'm actually going to pull that up. Not that one. Right there. Okay, if you're visually gifted, you look right there, and you see on your screen, right where I'm pointing, that's a shipping container. That's a Honda. <laughs> Not exactly uh, what we're looking for, but, you know, whatever. Uh, good news, nobody was hurt. This is becoming a safety issue said chief deputy for the Los Angeles City Councilman or Los, a Los Angeles City Councilman representing the working class area. He said the city would start issuing citations to firms that stack containers unsafely or whose trucks clog streets. Yeah, good luck with that because we've kind of thinned out the police force too. Yeah. So I'm not sure how that's going to work. As of Tuesday, there were 63 ships berthed at two ports and 96 waiting to dock. That's a lot. That is a lot. But the record was 100 waiting to dock, according to this article. Wilmington resident said her driveway was blocked by a truck as she tried to leave for work. Whole block is fed up with the never-ending traffic. Bunch of neighbors are very upset. It's an ongoing problem. We're just trying to get these trucks in and out. I'm literally out on the streets directing traffic. So that's cool. That's the, that's the Honda that I already showed you. Okay, visually gifted, if you're looking, this is from the Epic Times. It is just a picture. I'm not going to get into their article. But this is shipping containers waiting to be transferred from the ports. So this is at the ports. And it is stacked at least one, two, three, four, five high. And I think there's a six, but I can't confirm it from the picture. Just from the angle that it's taken at, I think they're actually six high at the ports 
That seems safe. And at least 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, at least 18 deep and at least three across. And this is just one little section. So you can all get out your calculators and do the math on that. It's a lot of damn shipping containers. Can I go back to the uh, the boat on fire real quick? Yeah. I found it in a Yahoo News article that two of the six containers that are on fire actually have hazardous material. They wow. had to evacuate some crew members from the ship, and they had to put like a, an emergency zone around the ship because it's expelling like toxic gas into the air. So they want to make sure if it like blows up, it doesn't blow up other ships. Perfect. <clears throat> so that that's really quite a situation. That's outstanding. Yeah. So nope. it's not just clothes that are on fire or something that can be easily extinguished. That's nice. Nice. Yeah. All right. So I don't know if they like pull hazmat out for that or they wait until it gets closer. I don't know. I don't know how they handle such things, but but well, it's problematic. They, do they have hazmat at sea? I don't know. The Division of the Coast Guard? They do, probably have something. But I, I don't know what they have in Canada either. I'm sure they have something similar. I just don't know what it's called. Yeah. Aquatic Mounties? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. No idea. Okay, one more thing with Mr. Browser. This is from KFI AM640 in California. Playing the hits back to back. Uh, these are quotes from a resident of Wilmington, Sonia Cervantes. It's a bunch of neighbors that are very upset because it's a nonstop situation. I would have to go out in. I have to go in at 6:30 to go to work. There's a trailer already block, blocking my driveway, so I couldn't get out. With no driver in the trailer, we would honk and honk. It was just crazy. Trucking company owner Frank Ararian was interviewed about the issue. He said, "Right now, that with the ports and everybody, everything that's going on over there, we're stuck with the containers, having to bring them all to the yard, and we only have so much space." Pete Buttigieg about the supply and chain issue said there are so many pieces to the supply chain and most of them are in private hands but what we have found is the administration can act as an honest broker and that's what we're doing getting different players together and securing commitments that are going to make a difference for getting the goods flowing he continued there are 17 billion in port improvements for the president's infrastructure bill and they're urgently needed this is one of the reasons why we're eager to see congressional action. I know my department is ready to put those dollars to work. Yeah, okay. So PDB is going to get his $17 billion and that's going to fix the ports tomorrow. Right. The government takes years to do this stuff. Yep. There is still PPP and EIDL money meant for small businesses that has never been allocated or spent. Yep. So, yeah, okay. Believe and, that when I see it. And that's from almost two years ago. Yep. Uh, back to Sonia, the local resident, she said they're sitting in the street for like 15, 20 minutes. Sometimes they unload the trailer in the street with no front part of it and they just leave it there. In response to these situations, the trucking owner is asking residents to be more understanding. We've been messed with tickets and being harassed. We ask the community to help us because we're only in the middle. Okay, good luck with that there, Mr. Business Owner. Right. So, uh, yeah. What an absolute, as we say on this show, because we have a mascot for it, dumpster fire. Giant dumpster fire. There is nothing that is going right with the movement of goods right now. No. Because you have a whole ton of ships coming in to ports that can't handle them, leaving a whole bunch of containers behind to trucking companies and ports that don't know what to do with them, and there's not enough truck drivers and enough trucks to get them out of Cali fast enough. So they're piling them on top of Hondas. I'm glad we don't own a Honda because I feel like we would be at risk. Well, and, I, we're in, and we're in Arizona, but sooner or later it's going to pour over to here. I had seen reports, too, that... Um, and these were from people on social media, so take it with a grain of salt, may or may not be true. It wasn't from verified sources, but that in certain neighborhoods they were dumping containers so that the truckers could then go back and pick up another load. In other words, 
it wasn't an unloaded container. They weren't dumping empty containers. They were dumping things that still had product and goods in them in the middle of neighborhoods. So if that's not going ri- to raise costs because it's going to get stolen. Oh, those are all looted. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it didn't take long for the uh, local thugs to get word of that and call up all their thug friends. And now hey, that, bring your pickup. Yeah. Now that stuff's on eBay. Yep. <laughs> neat okay so we just thought we'd share where this is currently at i'm very unhappy that i called it when i said they're just gonna start floating them in yeah so there they are and then when they get here uh we're just stacking them on hondas yeah so this is super cool this is this is christmas right here so i'm very glad somebody was not in that honda though yeah no so am i that would be awful that would be super awful uh, but still, I do feel bad for the Honda. That Honda was an innocent. Yes, it was. It did nothing wrong. But can you, you imagine know. that call to your insurance company? <laughs> They're like, that's, "Wait, what happened?" That's a farmer's commercial. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's, that's about it, man. All right. Uh, that's the latest update. We'll have more tomorrow, I'm sure, because it just keeps getting bloodier and bloodier. So, time to shift gears. We're going to talk about something else. But first, it is time for a musical interlude. You enjoy, and we will be right back. I told my mama I'm going to make it, and I meant that. I said I'm going to learn the guitar, and I did that. Anything to level up, see, I be with that. Because I know time is precious, you can't get a minute back. I had a dream that I would go and get a big bag. My cousin only 25 and push a big jack Me, I rather had a cannon with the Big Mac You send them shots at me, you know that they get sent back Yeah, cause every second is precious I stop Welcome back, dear listener, to the Soul of Wisdom I am Dan, producer wife Beth is here We made it back Yay We, we thought about just um, eating ourselves into some kind of stupor And finishing the show another day but then we decided that that probably wasn't the best for our health and we still had more to say. Yeah, I don't want a tummy ache. So we're here instead and we're happy about that because we like talking to you. Yeah. We also like reminding you to go to soulwisdom.com because <laughs> there you will find everything you need to know about us. All of our past podcast episodes are there. All of our businesses are there. You can find our teachable course there that can teach you how to run a business as long as it's an Etsy one. But we've got more coming. Some good stuff coming, too. Yeah. You'll also find our tip jar. If you like our show, please consider supporting us. We'd appreciate it. We also have an Amazon wish list. We do. So if you look behind me, we have, you know, Legos and we have Funkos. Oh, we're getting a Funko warehouse actually like two miles from where we live. Yeah. I'm hoping they have an outlet store. That would be awesome. But we'll see. Uh, and we have our pet dumpster fire. You'll notice... Uh, on the right side of the camera, visually gifted listeners, that we did bring out the uh, Halloween Lego head. He is cool. Yep. You know, it'd be fun to have, like, the whole body, but he'd be, like, six feet tall. Yeah. So, just the head. Okie dokie. So, what did I want to talk about? Oh, I wanted to talk about alcohol. <laughs> That's yeah. right. How could I forget that? <laughs> because we... We're a, we're a business food podcast. So you haven't figured that out. We have a business bent to everything, but then sometimes we get political, but it's always about the food. In the end, it's just about We wind up pulling food. food into almost every episode. Somehow. We do. You know, that's, that's kind of our shtick here. That, we, there's, there's certain things that always happen. Well, it changes with the Sunday show, but Monday through Friday, there's something about food, and I give you an alliterative introduction. Yes. And so, and, and off camera, you roll your eyes at me. Sometimes. Those three things every episode. Guaranteed. <laughs> Okie dokie. Back to Mr. Browser for the next story, Visually Gifted. Congratulations, you get to play along. This is very sad. Boston Beer tossed millions of cases of truly hard seltzer instead of discounting it, Chairman says. So I'm going to read this story, and then I'm going to tell you what I would have done with it. And then we're going to talk about how a bunch of other companies screw this stuff up, too. Because Sounds like fun. It does. You shouldn't waste. No. No. A business is there to do what, producer wife? Take people's money. Take people's money. 
But if you waste the money that you take from other people... Or if you throw away your product that you could sell to someone. Yeah. Those things don't cause you to have a balance sheet that's in the black. No. It tends to go red. Uh, and it went red for Boston Beer, by the way, to the uh, tune of $4.76 per share. That's a pretty huge loss. Yeah. I'm just saying. Okay. <clears throat> so... Boston Beer Chairman Jim Koch told CNBC on Friday the company decided to throw away excess, true, excess supply of Truly Hard Seltzer instead of discounting it in response to a category-wide sales slowdown. We were very aggressive about adding capacity, adding inventory, buying raw materials like cans and flavors, and frankly, we overbought. Koch, who also founded the Samuel Adams Parent, said in an interview on Closing Bell. And when the growth stopped, we had more of all those things than we were going to be able to use because there is a shelf life. We want truly to have that fresh, bright taste, so we're going to crush millions of cases of product before it goes stale, he said, offering an explanation for the company's third quarter earnings miss. And then they talk about the earnings miss. Asked by CNBC's Sarah Eisen why Boston Beer decided to toss the product Instead of offering sales promotions to try spring demand, Koch said the company had reservations about that strategy. You know, it's just not what we do at Boston Beer Co., Koch said. Our mission is to sell high-quality products and build high-quality brands. So rather than take a chance of it getting out into the market and going stale and consumers having a bad experience, we decided to make the hard decision to eat a lot of the product just to make sure our customers didn't get stale product and have a bad truly. Okay. FYI, the parent company also owns Dogfish Head, obviously truly, Sam Adams, which you mentioned, Twisted Tea, Angry Orchard, and a few others, but those are the biggies. Some of those we like. Yeah. Some of them are dog crap. <laughs> <laughs> just, my, just my opinion, allegedly, maybe. Some of it's good, some of it's not. Anyways... You have to be creative when you're in business. Yeah. Okay. So if they're saying that this stuff's going to go bad before it would get into a consumer's hands. Okay. The, I, I, I get that. You don't want to give crap to people. Yeah. But the question becomes, does just tossing it and wasting, you're, you're wasting, you're wasting materials so far down the supply line too. The cardboard for the cases, the metal for the cans, all the ingredients that went into the product, the labor and packaging the product. It's a huge amount of waste. Yes. So much went into nothing. What could you have done with it? <clears throat> well, here's what I would have done because I'm a creative dude. I would have run a contest. And I would have said, hey... Any small restaurant, like independent, in the United States, sign up on our website and we'll send you a case of this stuff. Just one case. The contest is develop a recipe that uses it. Make a sauce, do a marinade with it, whatever. And have a night where you make a special and you serve it to your customers and see what the reception is. If the reception is good, submit your recipe to us and the winning two or top two or three, whatever, each of those restaurants gets a hundred grand. It's a good idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. I almost swore there. <laughs> hell yes. We'll go with, I can say hell. <laughs> Came that close. I know. <laughs> but no, it is a good idea because you're taking something you're going to throw away anyways and you're turning it into a PR opportunity. Yep. And they'll use it, and I guarantee you there's all sorts of restaurants that would sign up to give that a go. Yeah. Especially if there was some money to chase out there. And that'd be a write-off for you anyways. Especially <clears> if they had really good social media behind it, and they could get, you know, retweets or whatever, the smaller companies from this bigger company. Yeah. Yeah, they could have easily used this product to create a buzz. The restaurant would have used it long before it went stale. And even if it did go a little stale, if they're cooking with it, who cares? It's not going to make that big of a difference when we're cooking. We, we do some cooking here, yeah. you know, and yeah, you can say that the higher quality wines, for example, will yield the higher quality sauce. And there's some truth to that. 
but you know if you're gonna take a seltzer and cook with it you're gonna kind of stale it up anyways in the process yeah so but the essence of the flavor is going to remain into whatever it is that you're doing and they could pick up some or potentially a lot of small businesses that might choose after something like that to carry their product at their bars yeah now there would have been all sorts of opportunity they probably would not have been able to use all of it i'm sure they would still have some that they'd have to destroy but it would have been able to tell a nice story of, hey, we've got all this extra stuff. We don't want to waste it. We want people to be creative with our product. See what you can do. Yeah. You know? But, you know, this is fun too, I guess. This is this is good alcohol that deserved a good home. And instead they destroyed it. Yeah. Did you have any other ideas of what they could have done? Um, one of my ideas, <clears throat> though, obviously, because we're still in the middle of the pandemic in a lot of areas there's restrictions but that even locally they could have donated some of that to first responders or obviously they're not going to drink it on the job but first responders or city council or whatever with the holidays coming up if there's most of the time when people have holiday parties they don't wait until all the way to christmas they usually happen at the beginning of december um most of the time but a lot of a lot of good what's what's the word i'm looking for like you know rubbing shoulders with people like here yeah. we have this product and we know traditionally again city council first responders anything like that in the area that they could just create you know some positive vibes yeah there's yeah. lots of stuff you can do with product as opposed to just throwing it away i would think so I mean, there might have, with your idea, there might be some local ordinance issues, but I imagine there'd be some workarounds if there was. Yeah. They probably could have done something. But here's the bad news. Back to Mr. Browser for the visually gifted. Um, Boston beer is not alone in their wastefulness. This lovely article from the Washington Post Footage of Amazon destroying thousands of unsold items in Britain prompts call for official, official investigation. British lawmakers are demanding a meeting with tech giant Amazon's country manager after an investigation at a warehouse in Scotland revealed that thousands of unsold or returned items, including televisions, books, sealed face masks, aren't we supposed to need those now, and laptops were being destroyed by the company. <clears throat> Footage from the undercover investigation by ITV News at the warehouse in the Scottish town of Dunfermline. I'm not pronouncing that right. That's okay. Also showed drones, headphones, jewelry, and countless other high-value products being placed into boxes labeled destroy before huge trucks were followed carrying the stock to landfill sites and recycling centers. <clears throat> Excuse me. The investigation said it amounted to the destruction of millions of products each year. This Arti was from the summer, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Article goes on and on. I don't think we need to go any deeper than that, but isn't it um, pathetic that we've got all this good product and we're just destroying or recycling it? I don't, I don't get that. No. Especially things like masks, which, you know, in a lot of countries and a lot of areas of our country are still like very much a thing. Yeah. You have to have them. And isn't there's computer <clears throat> chip shortages that are making it harder to produce new computers yeah. and we're just going to throw away computers that work? That doesn't make sense. Nope. Doesn't make sense. None of that makes sense. It's wasteful. It's stupid. But Amazon is like, yeah, it. For all of the billions that they have, how many more billions would they have if they would cut some of this waste of theirs? I don't know about you, uh, dear listener, but we can order one item off of Amazon and it'll come to us in a box that's seven times too large. Yes, or that happens can, often. Or we can order five items from Amazon and they'll come in five different boxes. Or we'll order three items from Amazon and only get two because the other one got lost and then they'll have to send it to us again. And it, even if we click the, if you have a Amazon Prime, you'll know what I'm talking about, but they often give you the option to have it delivered on your Amazon day and it's supposed to be delivered in fewer boxes that way and less waste and everything. Even if we click that, 
it will very often come like every item in their own box that is ginormous ginormously too big for the item well sometimes they get it right though sometimes they'll they'll package the delicate little tube of lipstick in with the 32 count water yeah yeah which totally works too it's <laughs> i don't know you can't you can't argue with how much success they have but in the same respect sometimes you just got to shake their head shake your head rather some of the well maybe you shake their head to shake some sense into it but the waste there is just phenomenal the food when it gets packaged next to the laundry detergent and the bleach and... yeah that leaks all over the food <sighs> yeah have you guys ever tried gain pasta by the way don't do it's it. yummy don't do it <laughs> <laughs> oh have some sense of adventure yuck yeah i agree yuck okay uh one more thing go back to the browser one more time visually gifted your eyes are getting a workout <clears throat> so this is an older story back from a couple of years ago but again it happens everywhere high-end burberry they burned bags clothes and perfume worth millions and i yeah, Burberry has careful processes in place to minimize the amount of excess stock we produce. On occasions when disposal of products is necessary, we do so in a responsible manner and we continue to seek ways to reduce and revalue our waste. Uh, quite honestly, here's what I envisioned they were doing, is just piling the clothes and bags in like a big bonfire, dumping the perfume on it for, for fuel, lighting it on fire as they all dance around. Yeah like wishing for higher stock prices yes that's what i'm thinking however this was such an outrage on 19 july 2018 that on 6 september 2018 less than two months later uh they did a 180 on that and they decided they were no longer going to destroy product but on top of it uh they would stop selling furs too just for good measure so but in all these cases, the the waste is just <clears throat> ridiculous. Number one, from a a business standpoint, if your stuff isn't together well enough that you don't have this kind of waste, then your business is poorly run. I've I've never been in any business personally where we've had this level of just stuff going in the trash. That's it seems bad. it seems prevalent in clothing companies though when i was doing a little bit of digging <clears throat> there's reports that pretty much any clothing company you can think of has done this but um i imagine a lot of the uh fast fashion companies do it h m has done it nike has done it there's there's a prevalence there and it's sad and i know there's a lot of margin in clothing so i'm sure that's part of what they're looking at going well we want our margins to stay high this didn't cost a lot to manufacture so we're not losing a lot if we just get rid of it and destroy it but there's people who can use clothing yeah or at the very least if you don't want your fashion out there in like a thrift shop or given to somebody or whatever if you're trying to protect the value of it there's part of me that can understand that but then at least make it possible for people to reuse the fabrics yeah you know um there's a um either way it's still wasted material that you should be able to do something with there's a vlogger <laughs> i watch and one of the boutiques that she gets some of her stuff from she's up in canada but one of the boutiques that she gets her stuff from they take all their extra fabric and they actually make garment bags with it that you can then buy so yeah. you're not going to be able to get you know a set of 10 garment bags that look identical but it's kind of cool and they're not wasting their product it's a very etsy -y kind of idea it is yeah but they yeah. look really neat oh i imagine yeah but i mean you could do something like that you could N nike's so popular just with its name that they could patchwork a bunch of different materials together and make a purse and sell it for like a couple hundred dollars and everybody would be on a wait list to get it Oh, undoubtedly, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. The the waste, especially especially in a time where we're already having out of control rising prices. You know, the who do you think pays for this waste, dear listener? Yeah, the Every, consumer. Everything is worked into the price of a product at the end of the day. So when these companies run inefficiently, when they're taking product and throwing it away, not only is it just this waste of time and labor and energy and 
supply and everything else, uh, it's driving up your prices. Yep. So if you do run a business, do them a favor and don't have this kind of waste. It's not too hard to figure out how to make this stuff work better. And if you get into an area where you've got extra product and you don't know what to do with it, get creative. Yeah. But creative isn't the trash can. No, know? we, I mean, look at our recycled resin ring. Yeah, that's a good point. Go to artandsoul.com, A-R-T-A-N-D-S-O-U-L-E.com, and just put in the search term recycled, and you will find a resin ring. This ring is one of our top sellers, and we make it with our garbage. <laughs> <laughs> All right? We take our little bits of resin that we cut off the blocks when we do our other rings, and we set them aside, and then we cast them into new clear resin blocks. So they've got this kind of like stained glass mosaic kind of thing going on. No two are ever the same. The customer understands it when they buy it, and everybody has loved it. Yep. We have never had a bad word on that ring. No. Nope. Check it out. It's a great Christmas idea, too. Yeah. And on that note, since we don't waste things, we're not going to waste any more of your time on this particular topic either because we think you understand what we're trying to say. So we're going to take a break. We're going to eat more food because that is what we do here. You're <laughs> going to listen to music. And then I want to get into more of the stuff with, uh, with Walmart. So stay tuned for this third segment because I think it will be informative because I guarantee you we're going to cover some stuff that um, the majority of you don't even know is going on. Yep. So we be right back. I need that peace of mind. A wise man once told me, seek it and ye should find. I guess I'm walking blind. Even if I couldn't read, I read between the lines. That's called even at odds. I just leave it to God. I'm not impressed with the impressions. See, I'm what you call a living legend. Too far from living reckless. But I still stay loyal to that red clay. And I will carry everything except for dead weight. My God, I swear you gave me a testimony. Welcome back, dear Always listener, for the final segment of today's fine, fine episode of soul of wisdom find us online soulwisdom.com that is spelled s-o-u-l and what e e s-o-u-l-e wisdom.com playing off of our last name so play along yeah questions at soulwisdom.com if you have questions after this segment you should definitely email them to us and ask and we'll cover them even further in a future episode because you just might have questions yeah this is a little bit deep this is a segment you want to pay attention to most certainly um, cause I might teach you something. Uh, some of you may know what I'm about to get into, but a lot of you will not, but it's, it's something I think we all need to be aware of and aware of quickly. I'll be honest with you up until, <clears throat> I don't know, a year ago, I didn't even know what this was, but it's been around for a while and it's getting more and more powerful. So if you want to figure out what's going on in any situation, Madam Producer Wife, What's the one thing that you follow to get to the solution? The money. The money. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> the money will always take you to the source of the issue every time. So in yesterday's Sunday discussion, we talked about Walmart and we talked about, <clears throat> excuse me, always by segment three, I'm starting to, to lose it. Got to work on that. Anyways, we always we were talking about uh, CRT, the critical race theory training that they were doing. We went into the materials and everything else, and we asked the question whether or not this was something a business should even be getting into. And we, I think, settled on probably not. Yeah. Okay. But there has to be a reason why. So I did a little more digging today. And I, I think I have the answer to that. And it's based on something called ESG. Producer wife, before I mentioned the concept to you about two hours ago, did you even know what ESG was? No, it sounds like one of those things you'd use to like hunt down like spirits or ghosts or something. Yeah, an ESG meter. <laughs> yeah, I think they had one in Ghostbusters, actually. Yeah. yeah, didn't Egon invent that? Something like that. <clears throat> I think so. This just occurred to me because this is something, again, I became aware of not that long ago, and it popped into my mind, and then I started connecting dots and stuff. So let's educate you first on what ESG is, everybody. Visually gifted, you may read along. It is up on the screen. This from our friends at Wikipedia. 
Environmental, Social, and Corporate Governance, that's ESG, is an evaluation of a firm's collective conscientiousness for social and environmental factors. It is typically a score that is compiled from data collected surrounding specific metrics related to intangible assets within the enterprise. It could be considered a form of a corporate social credit score. Not to be confused <clears throat> with the actual enterprise when we're talking about the ship. There's been many actual enterprises, actually. Actually, actually? Actually, actually. Double actual. <laughs> <laughs> so important takeaway just from those first couple of sentences corporate social credit score where have we heard about social credit scores china china that's how trump used to say it right yeah china that's fun to say i know why he says it that way now it's fun <laughs> <clears throat> say it that way more no but and the idea is where you can be in society what you have access to all of that is kind of determined by how well you play along yeah okay well esg is basically a social credit score for a company <clears throat> and they're monitoring a company as far as their environmental impact goes how they are on social issues and how their corporate governance works that's the esg there are several different firms that compile compile these scores and where it gets really interesting is that they all have slightly different standards so that's fun but just to scroll down a little bit here it lists out the things that are generally monitored under these these esg sections okay <clears throat> under environmental concerns they monitor a climate crisis and what a business is doing about the quote unquote climate crisis okay they're monitoring sustainability so how is a business's model work towards sustaining the resources that we have under social concerns that's the s in esg they are looking at diversity they're looking at the business's record on human rights they're looking at its record on consumer protection and for some reason their record on animal welfare animal testing all of that kind of stuff I bet. yeah okay okay that makes sense but i guess in the in the um, realm of Walmart where we started with yesterday, that one really didn't fit them. But you raise a good point. So cosmetics. And yeah, like I that, was yeah. going to say if Walmart <clears throat> has their own like brand, like house brand of cosmetics, it would apply. Made in China. Or um, they have, I believe they have some house brand of like lotions and all that kind of stuff. And some of that is grossly enough tested on animals as well. That's fair. Okay. Uh, and then under corporate governance, they're looking at things like how is your management structured? And specifically, is it structured with equity? Not equality, equity. equity. <clears throat> Difference. Uh, they're looking at employee relations. They're looking at executive compensation. And they're looking at employee compensation. So those are the kind of the main points that fall under this concept of ESG, this corporate social credit score. So you're saying, Dan, how exactly does this connect to Walmart and their critical race theory training? What does one have to do with the other? Well, it comes in with the S, okay? You're trying as a company to prove your validity on these three main points. So on the social end, what's the big thing everybody's talking about now? <clears throat> they're talking about equity talking about equity they're talking about race issues they're talking about how the white person needs to reevaluate their place in history and how it's entirely possible that as a white person myself i have been born with this inherent racism that i didn't even know that i had and i have to purge it from my system these are the things that are being talked about. But because they're gaining more and more traction and they're more and more popular, at least the media would have you believe that. Yeah. Then these companies potentially need to start chasing after these things so that the S on their score looks better. Yeah. So you say, Dan, you lovely, lovely podcast host, give us proof. Okay. 
Yahoo Finance. They track ESG for us. Yay, thanks. <clears throat> Walmart's ESG score is a 27, which is ranked as a medium there in the 49th percentile. The lower your numbers, the better. If you hover over the thing where it explains it, it says the final ESG risk ratings are a measure of unman un yeah, unmanaged risk on an absolute scale of 0 to 100 with a lower score signaling less unmanaged risk. So the lower the score, the better you are, right? Yeah. <clears throat> on an environmental risk, they score 3.4. Good on them, I guess, if you're into that sort of thing. On a governance risk, they score a 6.5. Social risk, where that CRT training would come into play, 17.3. So it is an area of opportunity for them. So if you wonder why is Walmart suddenly rolling out CRT and doing this division I don't want to I don't want to relitigate everything that we went into yesterday but <clears throat> but why are they doing it it's because they got to they got to get a better s score why do they need a better s score well what does everything come back to money the money exactly so your social credit score dear listeners very quickly starts to have an effect on what you're able to do don't believe me this from Reuters. This was April 15th, 2021. Headline, JP Morgan shoots for green finance stratosphere as ESG target tops peer plans. JP Morgan Chase aims to lend, invest, and provide other financial services for up to $2.5 trillion dollars of banking business to be done for companies and projects tackling climate change and social inequity over the next decade. <clears throat> 2.5 trillion. Tuh, not buh. Yep. Trillion. There was something else I was looking for in this article. Well, skip it. It doesn't really matter because it just goes into the the article goes into more information about the kind of things that they would and would not support, like how uh, how money is being invested into fossil fuels as opposed to green energy things, uh, how a company is investing uh, in their people, things like that. Oh, I know what it was that I wanted to share. If I can find it real quick, please, please come up fast so I'm not boring people. Okay, I'm just going to bore you, so we're going to move on. But no, it, the article in a section that for some reason I'm blinded to right now and I can't find, but I know it's there, so trust me. Uh, if not, go look it up on Reuters. They were talking about how <clears throat> this is becoming a bigger and bigger thing with not just JP Morgan Chase, but all banks, they're all moving in this direction of how is a company's rating on ESG going to determine how much money we're willing to give them. And if you don't think that it stops there, it doesn't, go to the Federal Reserve's website, because I've been there too. And they have paper after paper after paper where they talk about the importance of equity, climate change, corporate responsibility, things like that, in how money is lended and how the flow of money should happen. So those with the money have determined now that a business has to prove its social bona fides before it's going to get any money. You have to jump through their hoops or they're not going to give you anything. Yep. <clears throat> so if you walked away from yesterday's show going, yeah, they probably shouldn't be doing this, so why are they doing it? There's your why. If you follow the money, it comes down to ESG. And their S is bad relative to their other scores. So that's why they roll it out. 
It all comes down to the money. And it's pathetic. Yeah. It really is. Very much so. Because, again, we've talked about this. I am very much a believer in simple things and simple solutions and simple answers. And that's why I say things like the purpose of a business is to take a customer's money. Because it's the simple truth of it. Yeah. You know, as a worker, you go to the job to get your money because it's the simple truth of it. A customer comes to you to get the thing you have because it's the simple truth of it. But now we're going to throw in all these complex things that is basically social engineering and we're making the companies do it. And it's, it, it, I, I get why, if you're looking at the bigger plan of things, why you make the company do it, because there's certain things that the government can't do. They can't do things that could come across as being discriminatory or potentially going against any kind of of uh, constitutional violations, things like that. But some of this stuff, because a business is a private entity, they can get away with. So if they go to the business and say, you teach people this stuff or you don't get the money. Yeah. Well, then the business is going to teach it because they need the money. They want the money. But that is where we're at. And it is dangerous. It is. Because if you think, dear listener, that the concept of ESG is just going to stop at the corporate level, wait a while. It's coming to a bank account near you. At some point, when we go to buy a home or buy a car or just borrow money to send the kid to college, at some point, somebody's going to start looking at how do we handle these things. Do we have a history of, of being good social citizens? Do we have a history of supporting the environment? Or supporting or are, green businesses? Yeah, or are we not good with these things? And they may still lend you the money, but it wouldn't surprise me if it does something like make a difference on your interest rate. They'll start attaching scores to our social media accounts. Yep, it's coming. The, they might even have scores now. We just can't see them. Oh, I wouldn't doubt it for a minute. Yeah. That because they kind of had that anyway with the algorithms, because obviously there are certain people that get preferential treatment, but that could go much further beyond just their interaction rate or the amount of followers that they have. It could be all about the type of things they discuss and, you know, the causes they support or whatever. Yep. But it will come for us sooner or later. Poo-poo always rolls downhill. It does. Wait a while. So if you see this as a big a problem as I see it, speak up on it. I mean, really, speak up on it. Because it will destroy us. Uh, you just look at what's going on in China. Do a little reading. It's not pretty. No. No, they've... Forgive me, this is the best way that I can say it. If this continues and it rolls downhill to us, they're going to have every one of us by the balls. Yeah. It's just that simple. So God help us all if we let this happen. Yeah. But, you know, you can stop it. At some point, it just takes enough of us saying, no, we're done with all of this stuff. If enough people got together and said, we're not doing this anymore, it would stop tomorrow. Because we can grind everything to a halt if enough people stand up. But, again, it's here. This is why Walmart's training people the way they're training them. They want the money, and this is what they got to do to get it. Yep. That's my opinion. If you think that my analysis here is wrong, feel free to email me questions at soulwisdom.com and challenge me on it. I'll have that debate. I think I'm right. It always comes down to the money. If you follow it, this is, this is the answer. But please, disagree with me. I'd love to have that debate. I think on that note, I am done because I have made my point. Producer wife, any questions or anything that you have? No questions. I've definitely learned a few things. Yay. Yay. Okay. Now you can go teach me something. I don't know what yet, but find something because I want to learn now. I can't always be the teacher. That's fair. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure speaking with you today. Please do visit us at soulwisdom.com. Email us questions at soulwisdom.com. Tweet us at soulwisdom. 
go to soulwisdom.com slash learn and you can see our brand new Etsy teachable course. It will help people. If you know somebody who has an Etsy business, if you've been thinking about opening an Etsy business, check it out. There's some free content there for you to test drive. Please do so. It is Monday. Tomorrow will be Tuesday. We will speak with you again. It will be fun and we look forward to talking to you. See you tomorrow.